Baptist Church, welcome to worship. Glad to have you here. Lean in real close. I've got a number of announcements and my voice isn't working real good, so here they come. We have a new Bible study starting tonight at 5 o'clock. We're going to be studying the book of Jude. It's going to be led by Russ McKee. You want to come be part of that. Be here a little bit before 5 and we'll be diving right into it. We have our fourth coffee house coming up this Friday, October 21st. It's going to start at 10 o'clock. Hopefully we'll be out and get you back home by midnight, if not sooner. We need some adults there to help us out with all these little angels that are going to be flying around in here. So come on down for coffee house. Ladies, we got a new ministry for you, and that's basically all I can tell you about it because it's, it's kind of a new ministry. So October 23rd, Sunday at 4.30, you're invited to a special dinner just for the ladies right here at Calvary Baptist Church. And what does it entail? It entails you coming, and they'll inform you about what it is. It's a brand new ministry, and I promise you, you will be deeply and richly blessed if you come. So come on down, October 23rd, 4.30. Okay, listen real close to this. October 24th is early voting. So Christian, we have the statistics that say over 60% of Christians will not get out and vote this election. So it is your responsibility if you want to get out there early and vote to get out there and vote early. October 24th is when it starts at 8 a.m. at the Terry County Annex. If you find yourself a little frustrated about this presidential election, we've got some help for you. The band, the praise team, is going to be doing a car bash slash computer bash slash TV bash to raise money to purchase some things for the band. One being this beautiful keyboard that costs $1,500. So if you'd like to take your frustrations out and help out a good cause, come on out to the car bash. We'll give you a date real soon. Okay, we need your help once again on October 30th. We're going to be preparing some food to go out on October 31st to feed the BSN in Leveland. And we always do baked potatoes, and it's an amazing meal, but we need to clean those potatoes and season them and wrap them up. So October 30th, 3 o'clock in the kitchen, if you could come on down and help scrub about 150 million potatoes, it would be greatly appreciated. Okay, this is a real tough one. On October 30th, Robert and Janie Benton, who have done an amazing job keeping Calvary beautiful and clean and shiny, are retiring, and we're throwing them a retirement party. So you want to be here October 30th, 7 o'clock in the evening, to celebrate what they've done for Calvary and, and let them know how much they're appreciated. So mark it on your calendar, 7 p.m., October 30th, celebration party for Robert and Janie Benton. Hey, Robert, this one's for you. What happened to the corn that got hit by the car crossing the street? It got creamed! <laughs> Finally made it to the end of the announcements. Thanks for listening. Welcome to worship. Good morning. Yeah, I'm not even going to mention what that was. Sorry about that one. I am here excited about a new ministry that's starting. We are calling it Heartfelt. Next Sunday, I'm going to say seasoned women <laughs> and younger women. We want you all to come. We are going to have a little kind of a kickoff dinner. It's going to start at 4.30 to 5.45. We are going to explain what is going to be starting. We're not going to start the main event till January, but we're going to, just going to kind of explain what we're going to be doing. We are going to be Titus 2, women. The Bible tells us that men are, the older men are supposed to teach and mentor the younger men, as well as the women, the older women are supposed to mentor the younger women. So that is what we are going to be doing. We are starting this project, ministry, whatever you want to call it, in January, but we want you to come next Sunday. Let us show you what's going to be happening. We're really excited about this. We will have a nursery next Sunday, so if you need, uh, need that, that will be available. So there is a sign-up sheet on the Welcome Center, so please, please sign up and come next Sunday afternoon. We are so excited about this. And just a way to fellowship, 
and learn more about each other. We are going to be opening homes. It's going to be done in homes, not here at the church. And it's going to be one day or one evening a month, starting in January through May. And then we'll kind of take off in the summer and then start back August, September and doing it again. So we're really excited about this. So please come learn more about it. And uh, we need some seasoned ladies as well as the younger ones to come next Sunday. If you have any questions, you can ask myself or Myra. We'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Kim. Why don't you all stand and greet one another this morning? Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, he loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, he loves me. Yes, he does. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Yes, he does. Oh, Jesus loves me. One more time. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, oh, yes, Jesus loves me, oh, how he loves me. He does love you. I heard all the 8,700 announcements, I forgot one. If you notice, there are some shoe boxes like this made, or there's some flat ones out there that you can create and make if your engineering degree allows you. But this is one of the amazing outreaches we do at Calvary. It's Operation Christmas Child. You take one or some shoe boxes, sign out how many you took, go fill them up. Do not put meltable chocolates. Those go in my office. But put in, they've got a list of things you can put in here. Uh, bring it back and the church will take care of the postage. But I think last year, well over a hundred shoe boxes were shipped off to this Operation Christmas Child. Kids that will get absolutely nothing for Christmas unless you are blessing them by this. So some, some Sunday school classes take a number of boxes. Some families do this as a family outreach. You can do this as individuals. You can go together with people. Whatever you'd like to do, but grab some shoe boxes. Sign them out how many you got so we know how many you need to come back. And then go fill them up. Pray over them because these go all the way around the world. Most of ours from here in this area in West Texas go over there to South Africa. And so it tells you what you can think about. Don't put any war items in there because they're in war over there. Don't, don't put a gift card in there because they probably don't have uh, gift shops over there. So put the toys, put things that, that kids would love to have. But this is an amazing, I promise you wouldn't spend more than 20 bucks to fill up a shoebox. And so please pray about picking up a shoebox or two, filling it up, bringing it back, putting it in the big giant present box back there and then we'll take them finish wrapping them up and ship them off and it's going to be a blessing because believe it or not Christmas right around the corner can't believe it I think we're pulling out Christmas trees tomorrow I don't know but it's right around the corner also please don't forget our fall festival we still need people to help with that we had well over 300 people come through Calvary last year at fall festival so that means we need your help that's going to be October 26th Wednesday from 6 to 7.30, so don't forget that as well. But thank you for coming this morning and worshiping at Calvary Baptist Church. One of the ways that we worship here, very important, through prayer. And we do it corporately through worship and word, but we also do it individually. And that's why Kim and I are going to invite you down here this morning. We're going to be praying down here at the front. Kim and I are going to be specifically praying for the presidential election. As I said in the announcements, over 60% of Christians will not be voting, and that's not right. That's not right, folks. We can make a difference. And if you don't think God can change the heart of a man or a woman, 
I stand here before you saying, God changed my heart. That's why I'm here. So he can do more than you can imagine. So we need as, as voters to get out and cast our vote. So Kim and I will be praying for our nation, for our presidential candidates down here this morning. You're welcome to come to the altar by yourself. Or you're welcome to reach out to somebody around you. Put your arm around them. Say, hey, welcome here. Let's pray together. So let's go before the Lord right now in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father God, for this day that you've given us. Father, I thank you for being there for us through the thick and the thin of our lives. And Father, I just pray today that uh, we will open our eyes and our hearts to you and the message that, the, uh, that Steve's about to give us. And Father, I just pray for the praise band that they're going to bring us music that will do nothing but glorify you. And that uh, as we go from here, we go forward and we serve you to the best of our abilities and that we put you first in each and everything in our lives. In your great name I pray. Amen. Amen. Children, why don't you come on down for the children's moment? Oh, zippity doo da! come on down. Yes, indeed. Do I have a surprise? Wow. I hope somebody likes a chocolate Tootsie Pop. You, Ashlyn, what about, what about me? Maybe I like it. Hey, good to have everybody here. Tell me something that you have a lot of at your house. Do you have a lot of toys? Oh, man. I have, like, um, a bunch of bunch. A bunch, a bunch, a bunch. Yeah. And my toys, too. Yep. And think about that. What if, what if I came up and said, hey, can I have a toy? And you said, no. That wouldn't be nice, would it? What about candy? You know what's coming up soon is the big candy fest. <laughs> yeah, we go around and get all kinds of candy. And anybody get candy yesterday at the parade? I did. I got yeah. Lot. And what if I came up and said, can I have a piece of candy? And you said, no. Anybody have any candy today? I have one at my house. Wow, it just so happens Tabitha back here has a basket full of candy. Wow. Now, I can keep it because it's all mine and tell you, oops, sorry. Or I can share. I can do more by passing it out. You know what the Bible tells us to do? Listen to what God does for us. In Ephesians chapter 3, it says this. Now to him, God, who is able to do Imaginally more, imaginably more than we could ask or imagine. God can do so much more than we can even ask or imagine. He's got everything in his hand, and if you ask for a little, you'll only get a little. But if you ask for a lot, he can give you a bunch. Just like this sucker could only go to one person, it'd be kind of rude of me to take all my candy and just eat it all up and not share, wouldn't it? Think about all the things that you have. Maybe a toy that you can share, putting it in a shoebox and letting a little boy or girl around the world play with it who doesn't have any toys. Maybe at school, you can go sit with somebody at lunch and give them an encouraging word. So think about all the things that God has. Ask him for some so you can go do more, okay? I'm gonna pray and then maybe you can come over here if you want to and get one piece of candy from Tabitha, okay? <laughs> Let's pray. Father, I thank you for these boys and girls. I thank you for doing more in their lives every single day from parents that wanna show Jesus to their kids to these kids going and showing Jesus at their schools and everywhere else. So God, thank you for doing more in them and allowing them to go and do more. I ask in your name and everybody said, Amen. Amen. In John 3.30, it says that he must increase and that I must decrease. And that's what we need to be doing in our lives, church, is laying down our lives, saying, you know what, we want to put Jesus more. We want to make God more, more and more. And so as we sing these songs, you think about that. You can stand, sit, do whatever it is you need to do to worship this morning. I know a place where we can go to take 
lay the troubles down in your soul. I know a place where mercy flows. Take the stains and make you whiter than snow. And like a tide, it is rising up deep inside a current that moves and makes it come alive. Living water that brings the dead to life. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're going down. song it talked about laying down our burdens at the feet of Jesus and that's what we're called to do is lay lay ourselves down put ourselves below as Jonathan starts this song think about these words lay me down Sacrifice gonna be. I will bring a sacrifice. I lay me down, I'm not my own. I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down. Oh, hand on my heart, this much is. There's no life apart from you Lay me down, lay me down Letting go of my pride Letting go of 
my pride, giving up all my rights, take this life and let it shine, 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 take this life and let it shine. that church when we lay ourselves down and put him before us it's easy to say these words it will be my joy to say your will and your way it will be my joy to say your will your way it will be my joy to say your will your way it will be my joy to say your will your way always i want you to sing it like you mean it it will be my joy it will be my joy to say your will your way it will be my joy to say joy to say your will your way always I lay me down I'm not my own I belong to you There's no life apart from you. Lay me down, lay me down. Oh, lay me down, lay me down. Oh, lay me down, lay me to say than it is to do, isn't it? As we sing this next song, the simple solution to laying ourselves down is to just cry out to Him, Holy, Holy, and mean it with our hearts that He is holy and that we trust Him. Let's sing this together.
hope you believe that. Another thing that that Bible verse means is that the more that we give Him, the more He's going to give us. And I believe that. And this song kind of echoes that. The more that we seek Him, the more that we're going to find Him. The more I seek You, the more I find You. The more I find You, the more I love You. Drink from the cup in your hands Lay back against you and breathe Feel your heart beat This love is so deep It's more than I can say I melt in your peace It's overwhelming Do you believe that this morning, church? The more I seek you, the more I seek you, the more I find you, the more I find you, the more I love you. I want to sit at your feet. Drink from the cup in your hands Lay back against you and breathe Feel your heart beat This love is so deep It's more than I can stand I melt in your peace It's overwhelm us this morning and God that we would listen to the words that we've been singing that we need to lay our lives down that we need to lay our selfish pride down and say you know what God it is yours I give it to you he deserves more from us church so God I pray that you would just speak to us continue to pour out your spirit into this this building into this place into our hearts thank you for your son and everything that you've done in your name i pray amen amen hey it's good to have you here this morning i know you could be sitting at home watching some silly football game but you chose to come here let me tell you it's a good thing that you're here because life is short and we've got to pack a whole lot of life into it and so we've been on this journey about doing more. And so I, I sometimes get ahead of myself, so I need to step back, and I want to thank Ryan Crutcher, who's sitting down here, for doing more last week, for stepping up when he got the phone call from Steve that said, hey, Ryan, what are you doing? He made the foolish mistake of saying nothing. And so that's why he got to be here last Sunday. No, man, it was great having him bring the word that God laid on him. And, and then Gary Crutcher, who came back Sunday night and, and brought God's word, it's it brings a lot of peace to me knowing that godly men step up in here and I don't have to worry about what's going on, that Kim and I are able to kind of jump away for just a little while and refuel ourselves. 
I don't know if anybody is here this morning that this phrase, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong to you. Anybody here? I mean, you're painting and, and you're going to town and you realize you got the wrong paint. You're, you're doing the laundry and you grab the bleach instead of the laundry soap. I mean, it's just those things, if, if it can go wrong, well, those are called Murphy's Law. Anybody ever hear of Murphy's Law? There's actually a guy that they named that after. Edward J. Murphy from California, where all the fruits and nuts are. Come on now, don't get me on no cream corn joke again. But no, his name is Edward J. Murphy, and he worked at, of all places, Edwards Air Force Base. He, he was a pretty smart guy, but he had a technician working for him that made a huge mistake. And Edward's words to this technician was, if there's any way it can go wrong, you'll find it. That how, that's how the phrase, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. So I wrote down, I did some Googling, of course. John had lists of different laws, which are just hilarious. But here's some, some truisms about Murphy's Law. You will never find something you lost until you replace it. Uh, I promise you. Once you replace it, you'll find it. How about this one? A possession will be damaged in direct proportion to its value. If it ain't worth nothing, eh. But if it's priceless, it'll shatter. Here's a quick story. Some friends of ours went all the way over to like Ireland, Scotland, and, and they were kind enough to bring back an amazing gift for me with some Scottish chocolate, which was great. But for Kim, who loves to drink tea, brought her back a beautiful little teacup, and it was designed for this beautiful little spoon to go right in a slot with the cup. So it's spoon and cup together. Well, she has the cup, but that spoon and I had a little argument one morning, and it met the ceramic tile of our house kitchen, and the tile won. That spoon slipped right out. I mean, I was doing something important, I'm sure, like the dishes or something, and somehow that spoon just slipped right through, and it was just like slow motion. No. That's Murphy's Law. If it can break... It will break. So Steve, in his panic, tried to glue it back together. Instead of a spoon looking like this, it's kind of... But I, I sanded it down, and I glued it up, and Kim tucked it away in the drawer, never to be used again. Murphy's Law. I don't know if it ever affects you, but that's me. It was a priceless... I don't think I'm going to be going to Scotland to replace it, but I might get on the Internet... And see if I can find me another one. How about this one? These words are kind of overwhelming. But the meaning's there. The opulence of your office decor varies inversely with the fundamental solvency of your business. Which means appearances may be deceiving. That means once you get behind all the, the flowers and the floof, it might be kind of barren behind it. I don't know about you, but I'm not the best yard guy. I think I've brought that up a time or two, but I'm still working at it. But man, I tell you, in the front of the house looks good, but you open the door, you ever realize that? Or have you ever looked under your kid's bed? Or do you have a closet in your house that you'd rather not open? More of us, most of us have a storage room that was just kind of scary. Everything's, and any time you go into that, you never know what you're going to find. And I, I tell you all these things to go along with our journey about doing more. Because here is one of those laws we need to live by. Expect, expect less, get less. Expect more, get more. But why do you think I asked those little kids this morning, okay, only one piece of candy. Why? Because this is their one piece of candy. Whatever can fit in here. But if you say just one, okay. And then they came back and shopped for their, their baby brother that was at home in bed. Because they're crafty like that. Think about this. When, when we want more, we'll do a whole lot to get more. How many of us want that football game to go in overtime? More. More football. Or that movie that's just that tear jerker. You don't want it to end. We want more. But sometimes when we go to church, it's like, oh, I hope he's not long today. I hope it's a little bit less. I hope he curbs it today. Well, that's why I've been preaching about more. Come on. You want more. You're going to get more. I'm in, the, I'm in Ephesians today. New Testament book of Ephesians, I got it up here on the screen for you to kind of journey along with me, if you will. But Ephesians chapter 3 has an amazing story to go along with. 
And hopefully, you kind of figure out the storyline in here if we get there, okay? The story has a great, great meaning and a great line to it. And I'm, whoa, that's what happens when you click it too much. Murphy's Law says if you're impatient, it will catch up with you. Here we go. But in, in the Bible, in Ephesians chapter 3, and this is where we're at, and, and I want you to understand this, it's a story about expecting more from a God who has more to give us. I don't know if you've ever been anywhere, especially at a food place, where they ran out right before you. You ever been there? I've kind of been the recipient of that. Right before you. Man, you just can't wait. You're, you're kind of salivating over that, that chopped brisket, and then you get there, and it's like a pile of gristle. And that's all you get. Oh, but man, that's, that's the law. That's, the, that's Murphy's Law. But here in Ephesians chapter 3, we're going to take a journey about what God wants to do for us. For this reason, I kneel before. This is Paul talking, okay? Paul wants to be straight up with the people. He says, I kneel before the Father. That's a good thing to do. From whom every family in heaven on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, out of his, of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power. I want you to remember that word. It doesn't say, I hope he strengthens you with weakness, with disease, but with power through his spirit in your inner being is where it wants to be inside of us. It says, I pray that out of his glorious riches. That's what Paul, he's praying. Understand that. Not just asking, he's praying. So here we go. I don't know what's going on. I'm glad it's going to go through three different scriptures. Okay. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ. And think about his love for you. It's, it's limitless. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. All the fullness. Now to him who is able, this is our main one, who is able to do immeasurably more, to do more than all we ask or imagine according to his powers that is working in us. To him be the glory in the church, in Christ Jesus, throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. What an amazing story of what he can do. And this is just the, the tip of the iceberg is what we say. And I think therein lies our problem, church. I don't think we tap into the God who can do more. Let me just ask a quick question. How many of you have, have children or grandchildren? How many of you want them to be average, just middle of the road? And you don't. You want them to be above average. In order to be above average, you know what they have to do? Do more. They have to study more. They have, to, they have to go to school and learn more because you, want those, you don't want just an average teacher. You don't want an average doctor. You don't want an average financial investor. You want one that can give you more. Yet sometimes we settle for the mediocre. But the God that we say that we love and serve, He wants us to do more because He has more for us, abundantly more. What's it take? It takes a person of faith. It takes a person of faith to ask for more. Even in the difficult times of life, there's some good things out there. But there in Matthew chapter 9, 9 says, According to your faith, it will be done to you. According to your faith. And the key to unlocking this imaginary more God is our faith. Do we truly believe that he can? The, the title of this talk is Expect Less, Get Less. Expect more, get more. Think about that for just a minute. The law of expectations. Basically, it means this. We get what we expect. We tend to see what we want to see. We, we tend to hear what we want to hear. We tend to feel what we want to feel. We tend to act the way we want to act. And then eventually, we're upset with the achievements that we get or don't get. If you go through today with a ho-hum kind of attitude, I promise you, you'll have a ho-hum kind of day. But if, if you get up or got up this morning and said, man, there's something exciting about today. I'm alive and well. Now, I don't know if you know of any pessimists, but even in the Bible, as much as we love Job, he had a tendency to be a little bit pessimistic. In Job chapter 3, it says this, 
Everything I fear, this is Job talking, everything I fear and dread comes true. Everything I fear and dread comes true. Now you can focus on the pessimistic things of the world or maybe be like Paul. Maybe be just a little bit optimistic. In Philippians 1 it says, I live in eager expectation while going through these trials. He was, he was saying what he's, what I think he's saying is as soon as I get through these trials, something great is going to happen. I eagerly await getting through this to get to the good stuff. Let me, let me give these. Anybody ever have to eat a meal that you just, mm, had to drink a whole lot of liquid to get it down for a nice way of saying it, just to get to that good homemade chocolate cake? Because you can't eat the cake until you eat your meal, right? And so you stomach, you got through it, knowing as soon as you got through it, you got rewarded with that dessert that you've been looking for. That's the easiest way I can explain it, that God says, there's some tough times that lie ahead of you. But if you'll just work through getting through them, I've got some great stuff for you. Well, even people said, Brian spoke on David and Goliath last week. What a great talk. And, and many people thought that, well... Well, many people thought just he was limited just because he was a kid, because he was young. But David wanted more. Even the people around him. Well, he, he's the giant. Nobody can kill him. He's this. You're too small. Get behind us. Well, they even said this. We can't kill him. And I believe if David could have said it, he might have said, you know what? He's so big, I can't miss him. There you go. How about taking a look at that saying, Hey God, thank you for making Goliath so big that I can't miss him with this rock. And he said, well, he, was, he really wasn't as optimistic as you said. See, if he had five stones with him, I say he was very optimistic. I say he slung that first stone, took Goliath out, popped another stone in there and started swinging and was waiting for the next one to come up. That's the optimism that David had. He said, man, I, I'm, I'm not going to shortchange the devil there's no telling what he's bringing so I'm bringing more and I'm bringing more and if you want to bring some I'll have a little bit more too he wasn't just going to be a one hit wonder he said I'm here for the long haul because I want to do more church let me just tell you this morning about pessimism the way it was told to me pessimism is a cancer and it spreads quickly but understand this optimism is a cure for cancer and it spreads quicker I don't know if you've got that person in your life that kind of brings you down a little bit, that kind of sees the doom and gloom of life more than the rainbows and the sunshine. But has anybody ever walked up to you and said, hey, are you okay? You, you look a little, are you, you're not sick, are you? And all of a sudden, your throat starts itching. And all of a sudden, you get a little cough going on. Well, somebody says, man, I'm looking sick. I must be sick. People can talk us into things that aren't even there because we listen to the pessimism around us. So how do we do more in a do less world? How do you do more in a do less world? Understand this, I've said it before, by your faith. By your faith you can do all things because it says, I can do all things through Christ, Christ who gives me strength. Strength in my faith. Listen to this. They've done a study about mourning. Mourning people. Do you, do you, did you know this? That, that your day is set before you in the first 10 minutes that you're awake. The first 10 minutes sets the tone of your day. Can you believe it? Now come on now, some of you morning people, you know it don't even take 10 minutes. You get up and you wake up grumpy and it's all over after that. But think about your attitude. The first 10 minutes sets the tone of your day. And I know I have spoken about Eeyore a lot. So I went and read the theological book, Winnie the Pooh. Some great theological stuff there. And here's just an excerpt from it, okay? Listen closely, maybe you know it. Eeyore, the old donkey, stood by the side of the stream and looked at himself in the water. Pathetic. That's what it is. Pathetic. He turned and walked down the stream some 20 yards, splashed across the stream, and slowly walked back to the other side, looked into the water again, and said these words. Just as I thought, no better from this side either. Nobody, nobody minds 
the way I look. Nobody minds me or cares for me. Pathetic. That's what it is. Then from behind Eeyore comes Winnie the Pooh bouncing down the lane, yelling, Good morning, Eeyore! Good morning! To which Eeyore replies, Good morning if you say so, but I doubt it is. There's somebody like that in everyone's life. There are Winnie the Poohs who want to do more. And then there are those Eeyores that suck the very joy out of you. In order to do more, you've got to understand this. And I tell you, this scripture verse should be on the mirror of everybody's bathroom that sees in the mirror every day. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says this, Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. What an amazing verse to tell you morning people that it's going to be a great day. God is shining upon you that you can go and radiate that light to others. Or maybe not. It's your choice. That scripture tells us to get up instead of stepping into the muck every morning. How about stepping up to the rock of Jesus Christ? And standing on that rock all day. Oh, it's, it's so easy to put your foot on the floor and go, Oh, God, another day. And instead of going, Oh, God, what a day. Did you catch that amazing sunrise this morning? It looked like a fire that was erupting out of the ground. It was glorious. Oh, God, what a day. And then there's those pictures that you get from loving family members. My daughter sent this to me and says, what does the word fall mean in Texas? The answer? Nothing. It's still 90 degrees. It's going to be like 92 degrees today, folks. Where's fall in that? Other than make you fall over from heat exhaustion. Where's fall? Where's the coolness, the crispness? I guess it'll never come here. Man, it's going to come. One day we're going to have some fall weather. And think about this. Arise. That word should just get us up off our blessed backsides and get us out there in the world saying, God's got a plan today. I can't wait to see what it is. Romans 8, 28, that many of us have already memorized or have, have already read it. And we know that in all things, God works. God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And, and I hope you understand this, that God works for the good. We, there's songs, he's a good, good father. That's who he is. That's what he wants to do for us. And sometimes we got to get through the tough things in life. Parents, have you ever had to get on to your child? At least once. Now, I wouldn't say grandparents because our grandkids never do nothing wrong. But kids... If you've ever had to get, and then for some reason you've sat in that chair going, I, I, I don't know why we did this. Why we become parents. These kids are driving me. Understand this, there's, there's goodness in them. It just might take a little while longer to get it out of them. They've got to get through that phase called teenagerism. And they've got to become back to being a human being sometime. But they're going to be a good person when they grow up. You just got to be patient that within them is the goodness that God says. Always looking for the good is what we need to try to do. Even, I understand I'm going to talk about it tonight, but we are in an election year. 23 days. Like I said, 60 million Christians are professed not to go and vote. Wrong. Wrong. What you're telling God is you don't trust that He can change the heart of a man or a woman, and He can. He can. But we've got to look for the good. There was a guy back in, back in the old day, back, back in the day, by the name of Thomas Edison. Kind of an important guy. Kind of reaped the benefits of some of his things that he did. But he had an amazing outlook on life. And here's a true story about Thomas Edison. When he was 67 years old, a fire came into his laboratory and burnt everything. Burned his laboratory, burnt all of his works. I mean, literally gone to ashes. And the next morning, he walked out amongst the charred embers, literally in the middle of nothing but char and ruin. And these were his words that he said. There is great value in a disaster. 
All my mistakes are gone. Thank God I can start new. Now that's optimism. And you might be here, you might be battling something physical and all you see is the doom and the gloom. And that Eeyore syndrome seems to be a black blanket on you. I can never get out from underneath this. Oh yes you can. Because you have the power of God within that Holy Spirit that says you can, I can do all things. You can throw that blanket off. That doesn't mean Satan's not going to water it up and have it around the corner to throw it back on you again. And you can, throw, you can rebuke him. And the Bible says he must flee. In order to do more, you've got to believe in the power that God has given you. Thomas Edison did. All my mistakes are gone. I get to start brand new. The next thing we get to do when we have burdens and baggage that we think to carry, cast, throw, drop, kick. Cast your cares on the Lord and He will sustain. Sustain means lift or carry you. He said, I'm there for you. Sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. I don't know if you've heard that phrase. Man, that shook me to the core. Whew, I've been shaken to the core. But when you cast all your cares, if you're having trouble in a relationship, if you're having trouble financially, if you're, if you're having trouble in just period with, with trouble, cast it, throw it, get rid of it to the Lord. He cares for you. He doesn't want you to be burdened. He doesn't want you to carry the burdens. If you need a reminder, it's right behind me. The cross. He carried everything to it. Why did you put a ladder up there and take something off of it? You're never meant to carry that. Another way we can do more is with the power of positive words. Believe it or not, your words are powerful. Just the way you speak them or don't speak them, they are powerful. Think for a minute. The last time you said hi to somebody. Hey. Meh. What's up? Or when you look them in the eye, hello. How are you? And it's good to see you. So many times we forget things and how we say them. But in Titus chapter 2, understand this. It talks about waiting. Waiting for the blessed hope, which is Jesus Christ. The appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus. And it doesn't say sit down, camp. Because wait is an active word, believe it or not. Waiting for the Lord means we've got to be active about doing because he's coming back. And how many people have come up to you? I've heard that a hundred years. He's coming back. He's coming back. Well, you know what? He's a whole lot closer today than he was yesterday or a hundred years ago. He's coming back. And in order for us to be found servants of his faithful, we need to be doing more. How do we do more? One, don't let any of that talk come out of your mouth that's not good. The Bible tells me don't let any... Oof, Steve, you don't know what you're saying. Don't let any, in Ephesians 4, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Are there any curse words that are acceptable, parents, that you wouldn't mind your kid coming up and saying to you? Then there's no curse words that you as children of God can say before the Father that he says, oh, that's good. I don't mind, that's just a little one. No, don't let any unwholesome talk Come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. We aren't here to tear people down. Oh, I, I think on any given day we can. Just give you a list of names, and I think there's no problem finding something bad to say about them. Because we're good at bad, aren't we? Oh, hello? We're good at bad. I know we don't want to say amen, but it's true. We're good at bad because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians that bad company corrupts good character. And sometimes you find yourself in a place you know you shouldn't be. Or you find yourself watching or listening to something you shouldn't be watching and listening. And it corrupts your good character. And we've got to get rid of that because God says there's goodness in us that he wants us to keep and to show and to share. So what does it take? I think it takes some VIPs. Not very important people but very inspiring people. People that inspire you to do better. 
people there that, that holds you accountable in love but says, you're better than this. You know you can do better than this. Parents, I'm sure you might have said this to your child. Coaches, I'm sure you might have said this to an athlete. Hey, come on. You're better than this. Let's give it another try again. Come on, let's pick it up. Let's try it again. As a parent, that's what you want your child to do. Come on, you can do this. I know you have it within you. Or you can, well, you, you tried. C's good enough. See, now when Steve was in school, which is back when we had those chariots and the horses and they rode us to... When I was in high school, I was a C student, which stood for coast. I just coasted through school. If I got a C, hallelujah. A C was an A to Steve Carter. Because nobody really pushed me any harder than me. And I'm like, well, if C's good enough for me, C's good enough. Then I stepped into college. Had to write the check. Whoops. C wasn't good enough. And I worked harder and I studied harder and I stayed longer. And those grades started coming because I had, a, had what they say, a little skin in the game. I had some more investment in there. I, I wanted that teacher to inspire me more. And I expected that teacher to challenge me more. And then I expected myself to challenge myself more. Because if nobody else on this planet is going to encourage you, let me say this. You better be your biggest cheerleader. You better be in love with who you are and what God has created with you. You better look in that mirror and go, you know what, I might have stumbled, but I know how to get up. I might be face down, but I'm going to stand up. You need to tell yourself, God doesn't create junk. God created you on purpose, for a purpose, to serve and grow His kingdom. That's why you're here. For you to do more. But never forget, there are also these VDPs, very draining people. People that are the living embodiment of Eeyore. People that, that you could just say, hey man, God is good. And they would say, I guess. I guess I'm alive today. Man, and God is good. Well, that's yet to be seen. No, God is, well, they're draining the life. Do you understand this? For every positive you have, they have a negative. And we have got to understand that, that Jesus Christ is coming back one day. And yes, you might have heard that for a hundred years. Well, he's a hundred years closer today. And he's going to come back. The question is, what are you doing for him right now today? Are you growing closer? Are you growing deeper in your love for him? Or is it just church is what you do on Sunday and then go back into your life? I always say this, church isn't what you do, church is who you are. I am a church going person. I just don't do church because it's Sunday. That's what, I, that's what I am. I'm the body of Christ. I'm the church. And together we're the corporate church. And together on Sunday in corporate church, we lift one another up. We come and bring our burdens to the foot of the cross. We pray for one another. And then we go, not to show off, but to show others Christ's love in us. To do more. So this is the challenge today. Are you going to do more? Or are you just going to mildew? Those are the things that, that come into my mind. If I'm just going to say, okay, Steve, you really inspired me. I'm going to do more. You better believe I'm going to be watching you to see if you're doing more. First service, I said this. Yesterday, amazing parade right in front of Calvary Baptist Church. Thanked all you folks for helping. We served, I think, 21 gallons of hot chocolate. Yep. And six gallons of coffee. Ooh. So there you go. Hot chocolate, coffee. And you know what? Because people wanted to do more. So this is the challenge I gave them. This is the challenge I give you. You know what I think we need to do next year? I think we need to have something in the parade. I think we need to have our own float in the parade. Instead of watching all these floats go by and all these hundreds of people lined up, what an amazing opportunity it would take us to tell people about Jesus. Of course, I got some criticism. But what do you mean? What do you, it's, it was just yesterday. You don't need, No, it's time to do more. Fall festival's coming. 300 plus people are going to walk through the doors of Calvary. You know what I'm praying for? More. More to come through here. Because that means God is showing us that there's still people right here in our own neighborhood that need to hear about Jesus. And then the community-wide Thanksgiving meal is going to be right here. We, we, I was talking to Joy Osborne this morning and she, or yesterday and she said, you know, we're planning for 1,500. I'm praying for more. That we can serve more people the love of Jesus. 
through a plate of food. That's what it takes, church. We can either mildew or we can do more. The question is, which one do you want to do? That's the question this morning. It begins with your desire. It begins right here, right now, when it's time when we say the hymn of invitation and you stand up, where well, you're standing up to invite Christ into you, to do more in you than he has ever done before because you said, you know what? There's a whole lot of me that's empty. God, do more in me. Do more in me. I want to serve you more. So that's where we're at this morning. Are we going to be a church of sayers? Are we going to be a church of showers? That's the challenge I give you this morning. Would you stand with me, please? Father, this is your day, as your word says, and we are to rejoice and be glad in it. And so, God, even as it said, the first 10 minutes set the tone of the day, I think maybe some of us might have failed in being joyful. But there's an enemy out there that seeks to trip, to trap, there's a God out there that sings, says, I have overcome all these troubles. So, Father, this morning, our aisles are very wide and they're open. The altar is cleared out. I'm even way at the side. I don't want to be in anybody's way. But God, there, there's so much more to do. We want husbands and wives to be more husbands and more wives. To do more for one another. We want our children to be better teenagers and young adults, but they got to see why they need to be better. And that comes from better parents doing more. We want a church, not just to say they're a church, but to show they're a church and to do more. So Father, if we come here expecting little, we're going to get just that. But I think we come here expecting a lot, a lot more. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I lift up these people here this morning, Lord, to you. To do more in them. Father, show them how much more you have to give them. That you're a God who is doing immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. So show us, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray this. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest spray but I wholly trust in Jesus name Christ alone cornerstone we made strong in the Savior's love through the storm He is Lord Lord of all when darkness tries to hide His face I rest on His unchanging grace In every high and stormy gale My anchor holds within the veil My anchor holds within the veil Christ alone
Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of Lift this words up. Father, again, we're just so thankful for all that you do, Lord. And Father, I do pray this morning that everybody in here, Lord, seeks your face this morning, that we seek your will upon our life where we might serve you more, Lord. Father, we just uh, pray now as we leave this place, Father, that you would give us the eyes to see uh, what needs to be done. Give us the heart to know when we need to speak or talk or do whatever you would have us to do. Father, right now I ask that you would bless this offering, that you would bless the giver. I lift up each one of those that couldn't be here this morning, Father, and I pray that you would bring them home to us safely. And Father, thank you for giving us a a country where we can freely worship and praise you, Lord. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, and everybody said, what a good day to be in the Lord's house. As as we know that there's a world out there that needs to hear what we just heard about his love and his encouragement, that you are here for a purpose. And that world will never hear it if you just go out there and do the same thing you've always done. So I challenge you, go out there and make a difference today. And just like this young lady's coming this morning, Karen MacArthur is coming this morning, and she goes, I want this church to be my home church. So Karen, you come up here this morning, and I'm going to ask if anybody would welcome her into Calvary Baptist Church, raise your hand. Because she's coming from a sister church in this area, and she says, I want this to be my church because I know this is an active church. And so would anybody like to come down here and stand with Karen this morning and say, at Calvary, you will never stand alone. And that's the claim that we make with all people. You'll never stand alone. So before you head out the back door, come down the aisle, give Karen a hug and say, welcome to Calvary Baptist Church, the family of God that says no one's alone. John? Yeah, stand and grab a hand. Let's sing, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. And I hope you you know that to be true. Here we go. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, He loves me. Have a great day. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, 